Hey guys, my name is Christian Taylor. Welcome back to Crayler Tech, and today I'm going to be sharing some tips on how to lock down your Google account and protect yourself from SIM swapping. So recently, a YouTuber I really respect, John Prosser, had his front page tech YouTube channel completely taken over by hackers. The hackers compromised his channel and he believes it was through SIM swapping. And when they got into his channel, they renamed it to like Elon Musk, NASA, SpaceX, or something weird and sketchy. And they started doing a live stream saying that they would match Bitcoin donations. So like if you send them $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, they would send you back $2,000 of Bitcoin. This is clearly a scam. I don't really know who would fall for this, but unfortunately some people did. So by the way, as of today, August 16th, 2020, when this video was posted, Prosser just posted on Twitter that he finally, finally gained access back to the Front Page Tech YouTube channel with all of the videos restored. This was an 11 day process for him. 11 days for YouTube to fully restore the channel, get all the videos back up, and get access restored to John. So imagine if you didn't have 260,000 subscribers. What kind of support would you get from YouTube? How long would they take? Would they take months? Would they even help you restore your channel? It's definitely scary to think about. So what is sim swapping? Well, SIM swapping is a social engineering hack where somebody gets enough information about you, and this is not hard to do if you're a bigger influencer. They'll get things like your name, address, and phone number, and they'll call your phone carrier and say, hey, um, I'm really sorry, but I lost my phone. I dropped it in the lake. It's completely gone. So I bought a new phone on eBay and I also bought a SIM card. Maybe you're with T-Mobile. So they say, I bought a T-Mobile SIM card on eBay and I bought this new phone. Can you please switch the service from my old SIM card to my new T-Mobile SIM card? That'd be great. And T-Mobile goes, yeah, 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 great. Just give us your name and address to verify your account. We'll go ahead and get that switched over. So then what they do is they go to your Google account and they say, hey, I forgot my password, I need to reset it. Google goes, hey, no problem, just enter your phone number, we're gonna text you a code and you can use that to reset your password. Well, remember, the hackers called your phone carrier and they said, hey, I lost my phone pretending to be you, can you switch the cell phone service to this SIM card? So the hackers have hijacked your phone number. They have full possession of it. And now those text codes are going to the hacker's phone. So they go to Google, they request a password reset, and now all of a sudden the password reset code goes to the hacker. They reset your password, boom, they're into your Google account. They can see everything, Gmail, so all your emails, your YouTube channel, any videos you have uploaded, AdSense, if you're making ad revenue, they could take that over and withdraw it to their bank account. Google Drive, any files that you have hosted there, this is really serious. There are a lot of things connected to your Google account, not to mention your email is kind of the portal to everything. They could request a password reset to bank accounts and pretty much any account that your email address is tied to it is a serious, serious major problem if your Google account gets compromised. So with that being said, I just wanted to share some tips that I learned in this video while locking down my Google account. And the first thing is that your account is only as strong as your weakest link. First of all, if you do not have two-factor authentication enabled, go enable it now. Pause this video and go do it immediately. Now, if you do have two-factor authentication enabled, you may think that you're protected. You know, maybe you're using the Google Authenticator app or you get like a little notification to your phone and you tap it saying, yes, this was me when you sign in, but you're only as strong as your weakest link. And I believe by default, SMS codes are enabled as a backup option. This means you could get SIM swapped. So this means when you go to log into your account and it says paste the code from your authenticator app, you could click that thing that says try another way, that little blue text, and you could select any backup method. So if SMS codes are a backup method, you are susceptible to SIM swapping. Now I thought in order to remove SMS backup codes, it was a big ordeal. I was somehow under the impression that Google forced this as an insecure backup method and there was nothing you could do about it. So I wanna share some of the things I learned that can maybe help you lock down your Google account and protect yourself without spending a bunch of money and making some of the mistakes that I did. 
Now first, you do not need to be enrolled in Google Advanced Protection Program to remove SMS backup codes. For some reason, I thought that I had to enroll in this, and furthermore, I thought that I had to buy two physical hardware security keys to do this. So I went out and bought the Titan Security Key Bundle, and I'm glad I did, I'll talk more about that later, but be advised that you do not need to do this and you don't need Google Advanced Protection Mode to disable SMS backup codes. First of all, Google Advanced Protection Mode will disable access to Gmail and Google Drive on just about any app that is not Google official or on a small list of approved apps like Apple's Mail app or Mozilla Thunderbird. So as soon as I enabled Google Advanced Protection Mode, I was unable to sign into my email using Spark, which is my email client of choice. And at that point I'm like, whoa, 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 okay, I can't do this. I'm not willing to give up Spark. I like Spark. I don't wanna be like super locked down to the point that I can't use the programs that I need to use with my Google account. So I backed out and I thought I was defeated. I thought, man, it's just gonna be back to offering an SMS backup code if I bypass the Authenticator app and that's really insecure. But this is actually not the case. You do not need the advanced protection program to stop SIM swapping. Now, the second thing I learned is that you do not need a physical security key at all to remove SMS codes as a backup option. You can actually go in right now to your two-factor authentication settings, remove your phone number as a backup method, and you can just function with the Google Authenticator app or the Google, I think they call it like the Smart Lock app. They send you a little notification to your phone when someone's trying to sign in and you approve it or deny it as long as backup codes are not an option via sms on your account then sim swapping is not a factor i do still recommend physical security keys because i feel like it's the most secure way to protect your account I've chosen to use two physical security keys with my account and not use anything else, no authenticator app or anything, because someone would physically have to steal the security key to get into my account. Now I know there are always ways into an account, nothing is hack proof, and I could still get compromised, but the likelihood is a lot lower because it's a full security key big string of encrypted numbers and characters, and not just a little six digit code from an authenticator app. But with that being said, you don't need it, and you're still very secure using an authenticator app, but removing your phone number as a backup option. Which takes me to my third point, you do not need to remove your number from your Google account entirely in order to stop SMS backup codes and protect yourself against SIM swapping. Now, first of all, if you thought a phone number was required to even have a Google account, I did too. I didn't know you can actually go in and completely remove it from your Google account so there's no reference of it. But I wouldn't recommend this. While it does seem smart on the surface, having your phone number connected to your Google account can be insanely helpful to recover your account if you legitimately need to get in. Now, as long as you have your phone number where it's not an SMS backup code, but it is still listed on your account, you can use that to help recover your account in the event that you legitimately get locked out. Let's say you lost both of your security keys and you need access to your account. Well, you can go ahead and put in your phone number and your email address and some questions and information. And using that info, Google will help authenticate you and they'll send you an email saying, hey, someone's trying to gain access to your account. If you don't click this link within 48 hours, we're gonna proceed with helping them recover the account. So this way, if it's a hacker who knows your phone number and some of your personal information, you can immediately click that link, say this wasn't me, someone's trying to hack my account, and you can stop that stuff before it even happens, and there's no SMS backup code. Google's not gonna send them a code immediately to get into your account. There is that waiting period, but having that phone number on your account is legitimately helpful to you if you really do need to recover your account. So in summary, what are the steps you can take to lock down your Google account? Well, number one, enable two-factor authentication immediately if you haven't already. Number two, remove your phone number as a backup option for codes. Go to the two-factor authentication panel. Google lays it out very nicely and they tell you all of the methods currently set up that can be used as a method of two-factor authentication to get into your account. If your phone number is listed, delete it. 
If you can't delete it, if the trash can is grayed out, play with adding other more secure two-factor authentication methods like an Authenticator app or the Google Smart Lock app. And if you add enough, maybe you need two, I'm not sure, it will actually let you delete that phone number. Number three, consider physical security keys instead of an authenticator app. If protecting your Google account is really that important to you, I think it's worth the investment to have two physical security keys and use that system exclusively to rule out any kind of software to get into your account. Hey, so as I'm editing this, I wanted to make a note with a bit of an update and say that I am returning the Titan security key bundle that includes the Bluetooth security key. And this is because for me, it did not work how I expected. If you look at the bundle, you see it has a button and it says it's Bluetooth. So you think you pair it with your computer, you pair it with your phone. And when the two factor authentication screen comes up, you just press the button and it just logs you in. But that's not how it works in reality. You would have to plug it into your computer using a micro USB cable, ew, who wants to do that? And all the Bluetooth does is allow you to press the button to get a six digit code in the Google Smart Lock app on your phone, and then you have to enter that six digit code. But guess what? You can do that with the regular USB Titan security key because it has NFC. You can just tap it to the back of your phone. And honestly, I tested it straight up. It is faster using the NFC security key and the USB A1 is faster in every single case than this gimmicky Bluetooth one that has to be charged. Not to mention Bluetooth could definitely be a security vulnerability. So I did go ahead and return the bundle and I just ordered two of the USB a NFC Titan security keys because I really like those and two of them comes out to $50 which is the same cost as the bundle. It's just personal preference but beware they definitely don't work like how you think they do so I would highly recommend buying two of the USB a Titan security keys with NFC or look at a UB key or other alternatives. And just as a bonus, for accounts that require listing a phone number, sometimes bank accounts do this and they don't give you a choice and they force you to use that for two-factor authentication, consider getting a Google Voice number. If you're using Google Voice, then there's no SIM swapping because there's no SIM card. There's no carrier to call and say, I wanna switch it. None of that, it's all impossible. And definitely call your phone carrier and see if there's something they can do to protect against SIM swapping. Some phone carriers let you put a PIN. So if someone puts in a request to swap the SIM, they also have to provide the PIN number in order to do that. So if your carrier is able to do that for you, that's also great. And finally, make sure you're using a password manager. You should be using randomly generated passwords for every account, especially your Google account. So if you're not sure which password manager you should use, I made a video on that comparing a bunch of different options over there. And yeah, those are some ways that I've protected my Google account. Just a casual video for you sharing what I've learned and some things that you can do to protect your valuable online assets. So what do you do to protect your online accounts? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you like this video, do be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss when I release new videos. And with that said, I'll catch you guys next time.